Now, for the last 20 years, uh, Bluetooth has been a leader in wireless audio capabilities. But it was many years ago or several years ago that companies started looking at what's what do we need in the market? What do we need as far as capabilities are concerned to address the next 20 years of audio innovation and wireless audio innovation in the in the market? And it was actually a very specific group of companies that actually came to the table that really started this process. And it was actually the hearing aid companies. The hearing aid companies came to the Bluetooth special interest group as a group stating that they needed to have better audio capabilities, better wireless audio capabilities for the hearing aids, better standardization for hearing aids. And they wanted to standardize on Bluetooth technology and make it better for everyone across all hearing devices uh, to get access to, to wireless audio. So it was the it was the hearing aid companies that originally came to the Bluetooth special interest group in the first place. And what they ended up spearheading is the delivery and the development of LE Audio. Now, LE Audio is the new and next generation architecture for audio for Bluetooth for the next 20 years. Now, there are two architectures for, for Bluetooth. There's classic Bluetooth audio, which you've all known and have been using in the past, and there is now the LE audio architecture. Now, this is not to say that the, that the classic architecture is going away. This is not to say that because the LE audio architecture has been introduced, the capabilities that you have currently in your hearing aids or in your cochlear implants or any other audio devices is going to suddenly stop working. This is a new architecture that will layer on top of or work in conjunction with the original architecture. And most devices will actually run both architectures at the exact same time while new innovation and new capabilities come into and onto the new architecture for the future. Now, when we think about the new LE Audio architecture, there are really three core things that are coming to this, coming with this new architecture. Uh, the first is around the quality of the devices, the, the quality of the specification, and, uh, and providing incremental benefits and quality performance and power associated with, the, with Bluetooth devices. So ultimately raising the bar in quality, power, and performance of all Bluetooth devices overall. But the net new capabilities are within the hearing ecosystem. So the first part is around new standardization for hearing aids. So as I mentioned before, the hearing aid companies are the ones that came to the Bluetooth special interest group and stated we need to standardize better on Bluetooth technology for, uh, for hearing aids. So that meant bringing in new standardization for hearing aids that is now universal across all hearing aids that is now being implemented by GN, Starkey, and everyone else that's on the, uh, on the, the, the hearing aid hit list uh, is actually implementing the new capabilities for global interoperability of your hearing devices for the future of connecting to phones, tablets, PCs, TVs, and so on and so forth. The third area is around Oracast broadcast audio. And Oracast is what we're going to spend most of our time today talking about in terms of what that brings to the hearing ecosystem and how that how the progress that we're making in delivering and building that out for the for the future. And we really do see this as not just the broadcast audio capability for everybody but the next generation of assistive listening system capabilities as well for the hearing community. So let's start just a little bit with, you know, what is AuraCast and, and, and how does it work? AuraCast provides the ability for a transmitter or an audio source to be able to broadcast a Bluetooth audio signal to an unlimited number of users of, of devices that are within, within range. So if everyone in this room had an AuraCast-enabled device and we're, we're listening to the broadcast from the Ori transmitter, Everyone in this room would have the ability to hear that audio at the exact same time in the exact same way. And that's a lot different than how I used to have my own, how I have my own personal relationship between my phone and maybe my hearing device. 
This is about broadcast capabilities in public spaces. And there's three components that are associated with the AuraCast system. There's the transmitter, there's the receiver, and then there's what we call the assistant device in this. Now, a transmitter can be any audio source. It can be a smartphone, tablet, PC, public address system, AV system, anything that is broadcasting audio for any purpose, uh, for any reason, can be a transmitter of, of audio uh, to the hearing devices that, uh, that support AuraCast. On the receiver end, this is where we're talking about your, your hearing aids, your cochlear implants, but also, as we see the capability for Bluetooth, this is addressing to people with, uh, with um, TWS earbuds or headsets or headphones or mobile speakers can all be recipients of the broadcast from a, from a transmitter. Now, we also have this concept of an assistant. An assistant really is it's the remote control for you to be able to, to connect to or listen to a particular broadcast and a remote and, and the the assistant can come in a number of different forms it can be your smartphone it can be a, a a small specific device it could be integrated into a potential receiver but ultimately its design is because we envision this capability to have to where you will have multiple broadcasts in a single location and oftentimes you're going to need or look for some type of an assistant to be able to help you address which one do I want to listen to? Do I want to listen to this language? Do I want to listen to certain types of dialogue enhancement? What is the audio that I actually want to listen to? And the assistant is going to help you determine which broadcast you actually want to listen to. And and uh, um, Sam and, and um, Tracy will talk about how their devices have a bit of an assistant on the receiver specifically and how that works for uh, for users in that case as well. So those are the three main components associated with the, the AuraCast broadcast. Again, it is strictly a broadcast of audio from a transmitter directly to a number of devices. The one way to think about this is that in the same way that you're able to scan for and look for Wi-Fi access points for uh, for internet access, in the future, you'll be able to scan for Bluetooth or AuraCast access points for audio access in a variety of public spaces. Now, there are three main use cases or main ways that we are ca categorizing the initial capabilities for AuraCast and where AuraCast is, is sort of focused at this point in time. The first is around sharing your audio. This is around me being able to share my audio with you. These are personal sharing perspectives where I might have a video experience on my laptop and I want to share it with my friends and family around me. So you as being hearing recipients with, uh, with hearing aids or, or cochlear implants will actually be able to enjoy that experience just like everybody else by being able to listen to the broadcast from, a, from an audio from a, from a smartphone or audio from a from a laptop and enjoy that same video experience along with everybody else that's around that around that space. So again, share your audio as me wanting to share my audio with you. And regardless of what type of receiver you have, you'll be able to enjoy the experience just like everybody else. Help. Does that mean that your phone is going to broadcast? So the question, so we can do questions afterwards, but I'll answer that question. And the answer is yes. The question was, if no one heard, the question was, does that mean your phone was going to be able to broadcast? And the answer is yes, it will be able to broadcast. Like as an example, Samsung with their S23, S24 Fold platform uh, has the ability to transmit an AuraCast broadcast signal and any device that has the capability of receiving an AuraCast based transmission can listen to the audio from this particular device. We're actually demonstrating that in the in the booth uh, that we have in the exhibition area, where we have a uh, Samsung platform uh, just broadcasting music, and then if you have an Orcast enabled device, you're able to listen to that music from that uh, from that phone. So again, that's a personal sharing scenario that is is part of the delivery of Orcast broadcast audio. So you being able to participate in that using your hearing devices is exactly the, the scenario that you would be able to enjoy at that point. 
The second area is around unmuting your world. And, and really this is silent TVs are around us. I know for people with hearing loss and deaf, that's probably even more indicative, even when the volume is on the television. Uh, but we know that if you go to uh, waiting rooms or train stations or bars or other places where you might have uh, a, a, a video experience, oftentimes you don't have an audio experience. And what Oracast is enabling for that is that you have the ability to broadcast the audio wirelessly, silently, but then receive that audio on your Oracast enabled device. So if you have earbuds or a hearing aid or cochlear implants, You'll be able to see what audio is available to you, and you'll be able to listen to that directly, and you can listen to your audio experience independently of whatever audio experience someone else might be listening to. So if there are multiple TVs on the wall, you can choose which one you actually want to listen to and unmute your world and start having a, an audio experience now associated with that video experience as well. Now, the third area, and this is really where advocacy for hearing loss and, and hearing your best really comes into play, and this is how do you provide audio access in public spaces uh, where you're talking about train stations, uh, airports, places of worship, uh, waiting rooms, anywhere you need an, an audio experience or want a better audio experience because it's either difficult to hear or you just need the, the, the extra support of audio in those in those locations. And so this is where improving your audio accessibility, providing the next generation of assistive listening. The example in this case is around an airport. So think about the fact that there are multiple gates at an airport and you want to be able to listen to just the audio associated with your particular gate. That's where the Oracast experience can actually tune into is it gate B23, 24, 25, whichever one I want to listen to, you now have the ability to, to see that broadcast and listen to that directly into your, uh, into your earbuds. And I say now when you have that avail availability, you know, these are the things that, and these are the, the scenarios and these are the uh, use cases that companies like Amptronic and Listen Technologies are targeting in order to provide better hearing experiences for, uh, for everyone. And this applies not just to people with hearing loss, it applies to everyone that has difficulty or struggles with hearing audio in various, uh, in various venues. And it does go, it does apply to a number of different venue opportunities, anywhere from airports to bars to theaters. These are all areas that can benefit from augmented audio and augmented audio experiences or assistive audio experiences. And we envision all of these, uh, these locations as being potential recipients of an Oracast broadcast audio solution and providing new capabilities and new ways for you to access audio in public spaces. Now we have multiple companies that have, uh, have announced and delivered their support from ReSound and JBL. Samsung is all in. Uh, they've delivered it into the, as a transmitter through their phones. Their phones are also an assistant. They've delivered it through their earbuds that have the capability. Uh, and many of their uh, 4K televisions also have uh, the capability as well. And there are more coming. Android has announced that they are uh, starting to support the capabilities in Android 15. That should be available later this year. And that'll kickstart more phone platforms and more availability of, of devices that have the uh, that have Oracast and LEIDL capabilities in them. So we are seeing a lot of momentum behind this. We know of more launches that aren't on here that I can't talk about, but you'll start seeing those come through either at uh, um, uh, IFA, which is a consumer electronics show in Berlin, or at OIHA, which is a uh, hearing aid manufacturer show that will be in Hanover. Uh, come later this year. So you will start seeing more and more devices coming with this capability uh, for the future as well. And we've also seen as another sign of continued momentum, uh, Google Maps uh, actually just, and I know this has been capable for showing uh, availability of loop systems and assistive listening capabilities. Uh, Google Maps through an, a, an accessibility announcement they just put out in May 
now is giving businesses the opportunity to indicate availability of AuraCast in, at their location. It actually is identified as a as an item. So if I'm a business, I can identify whether or not I have AuraCast available in my business. And this is important because we have solutions that are starting to be delivered to those businesses in order to provide assisted listening capabilities in their business. And we want to make sure that there's an indication for that for the users so users can understand whether or not the capability is there or not. So we're excited about the fact that we're continuing to see momentum on this end as well to inform users of what's available uh, for the future. Uh, but we really do see AuraCast as the next generation of assistive listening capabilities for users such as yourselves. Uh, we believe that the deployment the capabilities of what you can do with this system makes it very simple to deliver a new system into a, uh, into a venue. It works in conjunction with or on top of a telecoil system. So this is not about pulling telecoils out of the out of businesses this is about giving more options and more capabilities for assistive listening for people with hearing loss. So it's in the same way that we have an overlay system of Ori here today over on top of the telecoil that's here, that will be the case for businesses in the future as well. So again, it's about providing more accessibility, more capabilities, and more access opportunities for users. The, the forecasts are significant in terms of what's possible here within the next four to five years. It is going to take product cycles. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, you know, I'm going to snap my fingers and then suddenly every single device is going to have it. You know, we are in a technology transition and during a technology transition, you do have cycles that you have to go through in order to get the capabilities available to everyone and a critical mass of those capabilities. But we do see that product cycle being within a four to five year type time frame where you're seeing more and more devices, a couple of cycles where you're going to end up with by 2028, 3 billion Bluetooth enabled devices with these capabilities shipping every single year. You're going to see 90% of all of the smartphones out there supporting these capabilities in it within the next, you know, next four to five years. And you see more and more locations available with these capabilities as, as Amptronic and Listen ramp up and their, their distri distribution ramps up and as their, their installers ramp up. The, 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 the possibilities that are here for the future and, and for right now of these capabilities is, is exciting to me in terms of where we're going. And I think people ultimately recognize that and see the possibilities of not just supporting people with hearing loss, but supporting audio access everywhere for everyone.